will be changing oil for a 2020 Toyota Corolla LE. You're going to need a jack. You're going to need some oil. You got some tools and your filters as well, depending on your car. Also, you're going to need jack stands for safety. First step is you're going to jack up the car. Just got to find a jacking point on the lower control arm or the frame. And jack the car up. You can get up on some jack stands. Looking down. I can get it. Probably only need to jack up one side on this. You should be high enough to get the oil to drain. A parking brake is used on the rear side of the tire to make sure the tire and the car doesn't move in a reverse way. We're putting the jack underneath the car. Underneath the frame. Underneath the frame. So you want to get the frame is the strongest part of the car so that the jack can hold the car up while we hold the weight of the car. So we can hold the weight of the car. We then lower the car down to the jack and test it to make sure it's securely underneath it. Ensure you receive an oil bin to collect all the old oil that we're about to drain. Also, it might be best to place a mat just in case the oil splashes so it doesn't go into the concrete of your driveway. Now we're going to put an oil pan underneath where the oil is going to be so we can start draining the old oil into the bin for recycling. A bar 15 millimeter. We're gonna use a 916 drain port. 916 or millimeter to loosen to open for the old oil to come out. This one's gonna be hot since we just started got back from driving so this one's gonna be hot. So we gotta be careful. What is it doing there? Oh my god, what the heck? <laughs> oil is so thin, so over time the oil breaks down from heat and driving the car, so that's why you need to change your oil, because the oil viscosity breaks down over time. This one's very thin. Screw up, screw the drain plug. One or two clicks, one click, two click, well let's do one more, three clicks, there we go. Now we gotta get the filter. Next we're gonna change the oil filter while we're at it. That wasn't even very tight actually. As you can see, Oil will be coming out from the oil filter. So I'm sure. to let it drain out slowly too. So you're ensure that you also have your box that collects all the oil. Slowly open it. As a side of warning, this should be done not entirely when you just get back from a long drive. Give it some time to cool, and then proceed with caution. Next, we're going to change out the filter once all the oil from the earth, well, from the oil filter has been taken out. Now that we have the same. Oh, yeah. Gotta make sure that they both match thread five and where the seal goes looks pretty good 
And that's just for a little bit of lubricant. Yeah, we tighten. you want to lube the new oil seal up. You put the old filter back in the box. And we're using Wix, by the way. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored, but it's a good brand. You want to use Wix. All right. I'm going to clean the surface of the block before I put the new filter. So you don't want no dirt underneath the filter seal. That's going to leak. And it also ensures that the old seal is not stuck on the block. Usually you want to fill the filter with oil, but since the filter sits sideways like that, it's kind of hard to fill it and put it on at the same time. So we should be fine with this one. Hand tight, that's all you want. How many miles do you have on it? Just put in the, the car. Of course, it's going to be in the glove box or the console, but that's the part number for the filter and then the date we changed it. You can also put the miles of the car on there too. That way, you know when the light, even though your car will tell you when the light comes on, we're changing it before the light came on. So it'd be nice to know we're going to reset it anyway, and it should come on after 3,000 miles. I think on this car, it's 3,000 miles. Now that we changed the filter and drained all the oil, we're going to go ahead and put the jack underneath the frame and check out the jack stand so that we can put the car back down. Now we'll be adding fresh oil to the engine. Be sure to use the funnel so that we won't have any mess. This cork right here with oil so I can fill up the car. Now add the quarts of oil into the engine. So first we're going to put four quarts, then we'll start the car, let it run, make sure the oil pressure comes up, then we'll shut the car off, and then we'll check oil on the dipstick and see if we need to add any more oil. Now we're going to screw it back in. The cap closes the engine. Start oil. the car and check the oil. There you go. So we just put four quarts in. We're putting the cap back on. We're going to start the car, let the oil pressure pump up into the motor, then shut the car off and check the oil, see if we need to add more. Checking the oil, see if we need to add more. Looks like it's right in the middle. Let me check it again. Looks like it's in the middle to me. Which is good. We're, we can put a little bit more in there. We can bring it up to here. It's like right in the middle between the two dots. start the car up is to let the oil get into the oil filter get the oil dispersed into the through the motor that way you get an accurate reading on the dipstick so we're good 
like four and a half quarts for this one. Now I'm going to reset the maintenance so that we don't get the same maintenance info that's needed during this time. You're going to go to the menu, it says not ready to drive, you go back and you're going to go to the settings part right here. You're going to scroll down to vehicle setting, hold, OK. See scheduled maintenance right there, push OK to reset scheduled maintenance. So we already just did ours. Reset, click OK. Reset complete. That's how you change the oil on a 2020 Toyota Corolla. 1.4.